if you ever are out there and you feel stagnant or if you feel blocked or if you feel like you're not in a spot where you want to be, take the time for yourself to acknowledge that and take a moment to embrace who you are, meditate even one minute a day and try to get to know yourself because we're here to get to know ourselves because we're all part of it. Thanks for joining me in Sheffy's Sandbox. I'm April Dawn Scheffler, and I invite you to play with me and my guest today, Brittany Gritella. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you for having me. Welcome to you. I'm so excited to be here in this energy space with you. Well, I believe that any meeting is not quite complete without a beverage. So in this segment, we pop into a virtual coffee house before hitting the beach. And being the benevolent host that I am, your order's on me. So what order do you give the barista? Oh, so I already had my coffee, but if I didn't have my coffee, it would be black coffee with cinnamon on top. Well, now that you have your warm beverage, let's dive right in. Okay, let's do this. This segment I call, I think I know you from somewhere. So sometimes living one's purpose and going through this human experience can look like playing small, but other times it can look like playing big. So in your spotlight moments, Brittany, have there been any claims to fame, times that our listeners may have seen you or your work? Oh, um, so my husband and I are um, musical. We uh, play together and our work has been all over the world for different commercials and movies and stuff like that. So you might have heard us in um, a Visa commercial ad. You might have heard us with the James Franco coach men's fragrance ad, but not our faces particularly. <laughs> um, we've been on the news before because of our Redskins ad. Um, and then we got interviewed, but that's local to DC, which is where we live in the DC area. So yeah, that's, that's our claim to fame. This segment is called linguistic tag and guests are asked to choose a word or phrase that they would like to hear used more often in everyday conversation, something that doesn't get enough play or enough airtime. And the prior guest chose joy or joyful or some joy derivative. So you are tasked to try to somehow fit that into our conversation today. Now you also get to choose a word for the next guest to dance with. And it could be a peculiar word that you find funny or something that just resonates with you. So what are you laying down for them to pick up? Colorful. Sometimes my language can get colorful. (laughs) Yeah, I'm um, a makeup artist, so uh, by trade, so I uh, I love color and I love to use it, especially on lips, just like you have lipstick on today. <laughs> Let's get started with how we met. Um, we are both part of the Soul Empowering Hypnosis Level Up Workshop. And I'm interested in finding out how you got roped into excuse me, how you signed up. <laughs> <laughs> Just knowing, knowing uh, Courtney, I'm wondering if there was some type of lure or roping in, or if this was just solely on you. Uh, let t- Tell me about that. But let's find out how you joined this um, journey to hypnotize other people. Because I Ooh. believe we started at the very same time. So we had our first, you know, we, you have this group that comes together for three hours. Uh, after an initial session in the main room, uh, Courtney breaks it up out into breakout rooms where you, um, two people are paired together, and you use that time uh, to pair uh, to hypnotize each other in turns. You just choose who is going to be the practitioner first. They hypnotize the other person, lead them through a session, and then about halfway through, you switch roles. So I believe you and I were having our first uh, practitioner sessions at the, on the same day. And I don't know about you, but my heart was like beating so fast. I was so scared because I didn't know what was going to happen. Well, first off, I'll answer the first part of the question. Uh, I 
had a session with Courtney about four years ago. And when I met her, I walked into her house and we sat down and we got into a very deep conversation really fast. So, and I don't typically talk about at that time, I didn't really typically talk about the things that I felt that I knew within myself to be true. Maybe you didn't see them, whatever. So when I talked to her, it was the first time that someone and I bounced off a very out there woo woo things that felt deeply true to me. But to other people, I would look like I had eyes all over my face, like I was some alien. So I, I always plugged that in. I had our session and we didn't talk for two years. I just can't remember time right now. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I feel like, I think I, um, I always wanted to start a podcast and I, so I did. One of my first guests happened to be Courtney because I, I emailed her and, well, and it was on subjects that are near and dear to me. And she said, yes, I thought she was probably going to say it's just not for me because at the time I only asked her to do, uh, I was only like a makeup artist podcast. So she probably was like, what the hell? <laughs> But she wasn't. Somehow it worked. And um, we talked colors in relation to spirit and spirituality and spiritual hypnotherapy. From there, we became close friends because we did a few episodes together. And from there, she was just like, hey, I just wanted you to know SEH is coming up. Um, and this happened to be when she came over to my house just for dinner with her husband. And I was like, okay. Um, knowing that it was a practice, we were going to be practitioners was terrifying. Like you were saying, like it did the moment, like before I clicked on the zoom link to start, I was nervous, but, uh, the moment we transferred into the rooms, like those, you know, branched off, I started crying happy tears because when I saw Susan's face was who was with me, there was some like transition that happened we immediately went into like this magical space and this is before we even started and uh so i went first had my you know sheet of paper courtney's uh transcript or whatever you're supposed to say and it was beautiful it was a, a magical experience and then vice versa when i went under it was a magical experience so that's my short and long run of how i know courtney and how I got roped in. <laughs> I've only done two so far. Um, I do want to practice outside of the class just because my wedding season's coming up and I'm getting a little bit worried because I'm starting to get booked on Saturdays. <laughs> but uh, I uh, have I've done it twice and it's a different feeling per person. So it's kind of addicting because it's like you really do journey with the person when you're the practitioner. And um, it's it's wild because you can kind of, I'm kind of visual in my mind's eye. So I don't know if I'm seeing what they're seeing or if I'm just interpreting it and seeing it in my mind's eye when you're the practitioner. It's exciting, but it's also, it feels like you're stepping into your truth every time you go in, even if it's, I mean, you're the practitioner. Uh, and to me, uh, I, I think I went into SEH as like, just feeling it out to see if it felt right for me to try it in my future as a profession. And it did, it feels, it feels really right. And, um, I think anything that feels scary for me, I try to lean into it at this point in my life. And this was one of the scariest things I've done. Uh, and the scariest thing to, you know, to true, truly believe in because there's so many people that are so many naysayers that are like, you're nuts. <laughs> Um, but when you step into your truth and you know, it's what's right for you, it's true for you, it's whatever, it's very empowering to also, um, come into it with that knowledge and understanding too. So, um, I'm really loving it for me. Um, I think I told Cordy this too. I'm going to be pivoting with this in a different way. Uh, not sure how, but I don't think it's going to be an active, like, Hey, hire me for hypnotherapy type of thing. It's going to be like a, um, like an onion layered onion type of product that I want to put out there eventually. So I'm going to be able to pair this developing, um, gift 
and with something else and make it like a its own little entity with all these different ingredients. So we'll see what that product looks like and how it bakes. <laughs> Well, I was listening so. to your clubhouse conversation with Courtney, and it sounds as though you were already incorporating visualization, maybe not hypnotism, but at least the visualization already in your makeup with your makeup clients. Can you? That's right. Yeah, I am doing that. Yeah. So what I do is, um, and this is just mostly for bridal trials um, when I go in to do their makeup. So I have them close their eyes with me and then I will journey. Um, I'll have them go with me to their wedding day with their eyes closed. And um, I let them know they're completely safe. It's the best day, perfect weather. And with their eyes closed, I have them um, seeing in their mind's eye that their hair is done, their makeup's done. I have them step into their gown and then I have them open up um, a door they twist the doorknob open and they walk into a completely empty room that has a full length mirror. And I ask them to, at their own time, walk up to the mirror and see themselves as the bride for the first time. And a lot of times, I, a lot of my brides get very emotional during this. And I do too, just because it is nice to visualize your wedding day sometimes because a lot of people are in the details of, of uh, the party at the stage when I'm doing the trial. So that for them to actually feel the love of their wedding day is really magical. So, and I have them go from the top of their head all the way down to their toes. And I want them to see every detail. And then when they're done looking however long, I have them go back up to see their makeup. Um, and the reason why I do this is because Pinterest is taking over the bridal community with makeup and hair. And a lot of times people will say, oh, I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I want to look like this. And they'll show me like a picture. And the picture is a lot of makeup. So if I did that, if I applied that picture to their face, it might go, you know, they might not enjoy their look. But a lot of times when they see themselves and they can express what they're seeing, it's much easier for me as an artist to uh, then apply whatever they're telling me. So yeah, that's why I've been doing it. And I've been doing that for a long time before even realizing it was um, in the same kind of pool as what we do now. Let's talk about makeup. Have you always been someone who loved to make others look their best and feel magical? Yeah. Uh-huh. So I've always been into it. My mom, um, <laughs> my mom is full blooded Mexican and she goes to bed with her makeup on because she doesn't want my dad to see her without any makeup on. Like this literally is true. Um, she's getting better about it, but she's like, no one should see me, you know, without my makeup on my essence. And her hair is like always like this big. Um, so I grew up with my mom like that. And so I always thought it was always oh, so fun. Uh, and she uses a lot of color. Uh, and I've always been into it. Um, after high school, I wanted to go get certified and become a makeup artist, but I did not. I ended up going to college, getting my degree in teaching. Thereafter- the reminds me after of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Have you seen <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the Hispanic version of it though. Makeup, you know, it always looked great and perfect. So that was definitely uh, something that I took on myself. Uh, not as much anymore. We live in the country. So I'm enjoying freedom of not wearing makeup. Uh, and uh, I've been a makeup artist for professionally for seven years and going strong, almost eight. It seemed like doing something like makeup, um, it would be very rewarding and that if that's your passion, it could be uh and it's you know it's artistry it's creative at the same time it seems to me like a lot of weekends and a lot of evenings does that kind of suck i mean that's a good question uh yes and no so uh, for me it's my passion truest passion um i love you know when i go in there i love just helping people and guiding them with their energy a lot of time bride brides are like scared so we can do like a little calm down session, which is what I do with them energetically. And it really helps. But um, a lot of times I'm done by noon. 
because uh, I start usually at 7 a.m., get out of there, and noon, I'm done, I'm home shortly after, and that's it. I'm literally working twice a, for two days a week, and it's equivalent and has exceeded my um, teaching salary, so I like it. <laughs> So you are you still teaching or no? The teaching was in the past. Nope. What grade teaching did you teach? Been in the past for a long time. I was teaching middle school and high school um, health education, physical education, and sex ed. Okay. So, yeah, I grew up playing very competitive soccer all my life, and my uh, my dad was like, "You're not going to get your hair certificate and makeup certification because he didn't see the." <laughs> didn't see how it could ever be a profession makeup artistry so I was like fair enough let me just feel out what it would be like to get a degree in something so I chose teaching still didn't work out still became a makeup artist <laughs> <laughs> when I was looking at your patreon page you have your own podcast and yeah. as such, you offer people who want to support you and be on this ride with you. There are four different tiers of which they can support you. And I was looking through those and one of those uh, included intuitive makeup application, I mm. think. So how right. does like that spiritual aspect of intuition play into makeup? Right. So I have a recording on there. It's an intuitive makeup tutorial is what I'm calling it. But a lot of times um, before I do makeup, if I haven't done it already, I will go into, um, I'll sit in my makeup chair before I get started and I'll just go into a deep, um, almost a similar to what I do for my brides where I have myself open up a door and I see the room is filled with whatever color, whatever color I want it to be filled with. And then I'll walk up to a full length mirror and see what my soul wants to do today for makeup or see what I want to do with my hair and just have fun. I think a lot of times um, as we become adults, our playful side kind of shrinks down as we have to do bills and, you know, do this and acknowledge this stuff and politics. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like all of that can get shoved aside and you can have this moment with yourself. And for me, I'm a painter too. So it really just gets me all juiced up and running for the day creatively, intuitively, and spiritually. So I like that tier. <laughs> when did you decide that you wanted to do a podcast? I'm interested because I haven't really talked to someone who has a podcast. Did, have you gotten similar feedback where everyone else around you was like, everyone wants to do it. You know, it seems like everyone wants to have a podcast or um, they were just kind of, what would you talk about? Do you really have much to say or would you run out of things to talk about? Or I don't know. So I don't, I didn't really get a lot of external validation when I was on the onset of this project. So I'm wondering what your experience was like, but shoot, whenever anyone approaches me about, they've been thinking about doing a podcast. I totally believe, yes, yes, you should. If the idea is there, planted that seed in your heart that you've thought maybe about doing a podcast, yes, because thing right. is, maybe you'll find out as you go into it that it's not what you thought it was. But at least you know, and that that intention or that dream or that what if is no longer in play. Like, you know, because you've been there, you, you tried it and either it worked for you uh, or it didn't. And maybe uh, if you just had two or three episodes, maybe those two or three episodes needed to be out there in the world. And that was all that your podcast really needed to fulfill in this universe. I don't know, but I'm all for podcasters supporting each other, giving them helpful feedback, uh, how to's like what, what you found worked best for you, things that were so irritating and made you want to scream and that this was the <laughs> fix. So what I'm interested in like how your uh, podcast came to be and 
what you've learned since then? Um, so my podcast originally was mostly going to be about spirituality meets makeup. So I was going to combine the two and I didn't know how that was going to look. So I, I, uh, it was called makeup and podcast. And so <laughs> now it's called inside out podcast. But when I started the, the I felt like, a, um, a lot of times, you know, when people feel things intuitively, they can see, hear, know, taste, uh, they can get touches, whatever. They, the list goes on. So I know a lot of things or I can feel a lot of things. And the feeling I got from it was I said to myself, I really want to start a podcast. I had a few podcasts I was listening to that were spiritual and I thought I could mix the two. So I did. I started it. And in the beginning, it was hard because I was getting a lot of block roadblocks because I didn't really want to talk about makeup that much. I was like not interested in talking about makeup. Cause I'm just, it's more physical for me. It's not, I don't talk about it. When, once I transitioned into inside out podcast, which is about beauty on the inside and out, um, I, it, it kind of all came out for me and I really do before I record, try to open up my channels and let anything that wants to flow in flow in. And that helps me a lot. So I'm not alone per se, if I'm doing a, a episode by myself. And so the flow has been pretty easy. I think the hardest thing for me sometimes is actually having guests that um, are just on the phone because I don't do Zoom yet, which I think might be a good idea. That's been the hardest thing because you're literally just on the phone with someone that you might not have ever met in person. Mm -hmm. So there is sort of a, like a stifled energy there for the other side. So um, that's the only like hiccups I've gotten so far. Other than that, it's been great. I just, I usually don't do them unless I feel like I don't do episodes if they feel like a drag. Mm. So like if I'm like every Wednesday I come out with something and if on a Wednesday I'm like, I have nothing, then I have nothing. So that's just me so far. Let's talk about color. Um, Courtney had brought up the fact that uh, even on your Instagram, if you go to your Instagram wall, everything is, it's like this patchwork, this beautifully constructed patchwork of colors and, and things like that. So I checked it out and I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Now I felt <laughs> like mine was so inferior. <laughs> like there's no master oh, plan to the, where the blocks are on the, on the Instagram <laughs> wall. Friend. I was like, oh, that funny. is so creative. Thank you. I, I love color. I love, I love color as well. I think one of my favorite shows, I can't remember what it's called now, but there would be a color of the day. And, um, and I think that, that was my favorite part of the show as a kid is like, what's the color of the day? Oh, yeah. I think colors are magical. And I feel like I see people in colors after chatting or during chatting. So for example, my husband, who is the musician in the house, um, he plays guitar and he told me that all of his notes that he plays have different colors. Mm -hmm. So and even songs have different colors. So it's really cool. So we all play around with coloring, <laughs> with different type of coloring than you would think. You said you can often see colors. So do, do I have a specific color that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, let me close my eyes and just see if I can, I mean, cause there's my, there's my thought color and then there's like, I need to like, yeah. Mm. So what I see for you was a, um, like a deep golden yellow. <laughs> my my brain wanted me to think lavender. <laughs> Brittany, that is so fascinating. I did. I knew you might say yellow because yellow is the energy that's been coming through. Um, like whenever I've been going on these hip, uh, hypnosis sessions, and sometimes uh, the the practitioner will be trying to guide me in something, and then the color yellow will just hijack the whole thing. I'm like, it's not cooperating. <laughs> You know, you're, I know you're trying to guide me into this area or whatever, <laughs> but you know, yellow is hijacking it. I'm just seeing like these uh, <laughs> lightning circles, this little color show of, of yellow. 
and that's happened several times. And then I was in a, a hypnosis session as again as a client back in January, and I was talking about the yellow, and the person I was with, the practitioner, she had this sudden inclination to ask me to invite the yellow uh, into my belly, like the Care Bear, like the Care Bears, like she was seeing like a yellow Care Bear and how <laughs> they just had that energy, the Care Bear stare from their yeah. bellies and <laughs> shoots out from their bellies. And she was felt that invitation that she wanted to tell me to invite that yellow in and like shoot it out from my belly in a Care Bear <laughs> stare. However, she stopped herself short because she, her thinking mind, right, was like that stupid. Like she like censored herself completely, like, totally wow. there. She's like, um, she didn't think I was as old as I am. So she didn't think I knew what Care Bears were all about. <laughs> So she didn't want to make this reference that I wouldn't get and, and all this stuff. And I was afterwards, right. when she told me that, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I'm 39 years old. I totally get Care Bears. That was the thing when I was growing up. I think I maybe have even had the yellow Care Bear. Um, <laughs> and it, it was so fascinating. So how she ended up telling me about this at all is because the next day, or two she was on a bus and this girl had a care bear <clears throat> in her backpack and turned and it whipped around and hit this practitioner in the face with the care bear and at first you know <laughs> us in, in this human experience she almost wanted to tell the kid you know check yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> but she noticed it was the yellow care bear and so she was like, okay, I'm going to have to tell April about this because it's from the universe, this, this yellow Care Bear <laughs> energy. So anyway, yes, I've been trying to find more ways of inviting yellow into my life. That is so cool, Brittany, that you said that. <laughs> you could have chosen so many, so many other colors. Yeah, well, my makeup artist mind was like definitely lavender but then i closed my eyes and that golden yellow was right there so yep i just happen to also be a makeup artist so i see i also see people's colors per their skin tone <laughs> so it's really i i play around with colors in all sorts of different ways so you're saying i should wear lavender is that is that what i'm getting yes I'm getting, I'm getting a some, lavender free, some free advice here. Is that makeup yeah. or clothing? Like, is it like lavender eyeshadow that we're talking about or just overall incorporate more lavender? Both. I think for your makeup, you could definitely play around with a tiny bit of lavender on the outside of your eye, not on the inside. And when you open your eye, you can put it a little bit above where your pupil is. And so it's there. And for your color, uh, for wearing clothes, I think lavender would look marvelous on you. The name of the group, is it Dapio? You're, you and your husband's group? Oh, so, um, yeah, we just changed our name. Um, we moved to the country and um, we named ourselves Dopio about nine years ago. I had just moved from Italy to back to the States and we, I w he was like, what should we name ourselves? And I was like, I have no idea. And I was like, we could say, we can be Dopio. Uh, and he was like, well, what does that mean? And I was like, well, there's different meanings. So Dopio could be two, you know, shots of coffee and whatever for a Starbucks order. Or it can be the flow of harmonies, two, two harmonies together. So we went with it and we never felt like it was the name, but we stuck with it because we got a publisher and we got signed with the publisher under that name. So we just kept it and kept it and kept it. Um, and finally, it just came to us that we needed to change it. And he came up with the Frontiers and I, we, I love it. So we just changed our name to the Frontiers and yeah, check us out. <laughs> 
music, did you, when did that start? Did you like have choir in middle school and just realized from there? Or did you grow up singing in church or what? Where did the um, fascination with music start? So I have always had a love of harmony, harmonizing, but I've never was like, I never pursued it. I never did anything with it. And then I met my husband um, and I had known him since I was a little girl, but we re-met again after traveling, you know, military style um, at a bar. He was playing a show and I was like, oh my gosh, there's, there's that guy. Was, he was my first kiss. I was like, that was my first kiss, that guy playing. And uh, so he came up to me and he bought me a beer and then um, we just started dating shortly after and it was you know now we're married now we have a child but uh he's a musician so he i could hold a tune and he wrote a song he's like can you sing the harmony for this i was like oh that's easy and and i did it he was like how did you know the harmony because he was going to tell me on the guitar what it was so i could hear it and then sing that note I was like, oh, well, it's easy, you know, harmonizing. I love harmonizing. He was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. And so that, from there forward, we started recording music and I was just kind of like more of his instrument than just to help with the background music. And then all of a sudden we started singing together and it just kind of blossomed slowly, progressively. And now here we are, we sing together and I'm starting to play the guitar a little bit more. So um, that's been really neat too. Uh, so my fascination was never, um, organically there, I guess it was there, but it was, it, it was like one of those like monsters that were sleeping, mm -hmm. you know, inside of me. And then when it, once it got woken up, it's never gone away. And it's been a part of me that I've loved exploring. Um, I just don't know if I would have ever explored it if I had not met my partner. Before we jumped on this call, I looked and saw some of his uh, his guitar playing, and like the fingering was just so fast and so talented. Is so. this his is this his full time gig, or does he have uh, a air quotes you know normal a normal job? Nope, he is not a normal job guy. Um, so he uh, is a professional musician through and through. He does uh, virtual lessons. Uh, we have a publisher, so it, the, it's just like a whole swirling of how he makes a living. And it's amazing because we both are creative. We both have our own businesses and we just, just get to hang out a lot. And I still really like him. So that's good. <laughs> that spiritual part of it with the hypnosis and the channeling and that kind of stuff, is that a little bit separate for now? We've been dating since 2009, so that many years. <laughs> okay, and, I guess that's and, what I was kind of yeah. hinting at or trying to feel out was whether it's still new love. Like you said, you, you still like him after all this time. You know, how long is that? And that's plenty of time for people to have gotten tired of each other and start... <sighs> looking elsewhere. So I think that's beautiful when two people have similar passions and they enjoy spending time together and it doesn't, that time together doesn't drive them apart. So I'm guessing when COVID yeah. hit, it didn't affect you guys and your relationship the same as it did <laughs> other couples who weren't used to spending so much time together, who all of a sudden maybe have realized, oh, well, I really needed my space away from this person mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> now we we're you know in the same house 24 yeah hours a day. yeah covid has been always in our household we're constantly home so before all this it was like oh it's just another day you know but we also he and i are always ever evolving so we're, we're always evolving into um something else whatever that looks like so now we live at a farmhouse and we're having to navigate you know homeownership and having a lot of land and well a decent amount of land and opening up a studio and you know all of the stuff so i feel like you know we've put on so many hats together but we're doing it at the same time and so we're each other's equal friends and um we're both fiery though so we both we de we both definitely meet each other right at each other's eye level and say what'd you say <laughs> <laughs> 
And so I think that's really, it's good because I've never met anyone that can like meet me right in my eye too, when I'm like super sure what I want to do. And he is too. It's like, okay, let's talk about this. Because usually it's me in relation, other relationships I've been in where I'm like telling him what to do. I'm like, okay, you're doing this and then I'm doing this. <laughs> so um, he's been my perfect partner for me. And uh, yeah, but yeah, always wearing different hats for us has been our love language maybe. Is he on the same uh, woo-woo spiritual path or is he more of, like you said, just allowing you to evolve and become your best self, your, the best Brittany, and you're allowing him space for whatever his journey looks like? Is it? Yeah, I would say it's a little bit more, more separate than it is more, we're, we're open with each other. The aspect that he gets a little bit, he, he just like puts his arms up about when it comes to something that I hold true is the knowing he's like, he, he, and I think this is true. He's like, you're never going to know what you're doing until you're dead, until you die. You look back and he's like, you can't say that, you know, what's going to happen um, when you die. And I'm like, well, I feel like I do because I feel like I've already been there. I, and, you know, and all the stuff. And he's like, wait, I don't, he just doesn't have it the capacity for that conversation is it's still a beautiful conversation it's just that's where we both are different in our beliefs but everything else he's more of a questioning person and i'm more of a feeling out like i'm in the dark type person and then i hold on to what's true and he's more of a oh always questioning but um and he he's uh very catholic so that aspect to it is something i was raised catholic too and so talking about Archangel Michael, talking about all the archangels is really our bridge to talk into it. But um, yeah, we both let each other be as we are. So um, I know when you, you said when you met Courtney, you were able to bounce off of her concepts and things that would have been too woo-woo for, for mainstream. Uh, when did you first yeah. get an inkling about your gifts? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I never take them on as like, I have this, but it just comes. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, here we are I'm doing this. Um, but well, I was over at Courtney's house and we had just recorded a podcast and I had a question that I couldn't get an answer for even when I was sitting in meditation. And she was like, well, why don't we just sit for a second and I can ask your soul or your subconscious, whatever she, uh, for a second and see what comes. So I sat there for a second and boom, um, my guide O'Brien came in and talked. So that was, that was different. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I definitely, um, it happened that time. And then thereafter it happened again and again. So the channeling, do you, um, has it been just mostly, has it been your own soul, your own guide, or have you been able to channel other, other entities? Right. Um, so far I have, I don't know if you call it mediumship, but I've been able to feel the energy of um, when other souls are here to say hi, um, but I haven't been able to channel them, but when, and I call them in, it's not like they're like, hey, it's John Lennon, what's up? It's just different. So I'll be like, hey, this was, I would love to take on the energy of X, Y, and Z, and I'll see if anything comes, and then I'll feel if they are here. But with channeling, it's been mostly either my higher self has come through or Orion has come through. With channeling, um, it, come, it comes in a whole different ballgame of energy. So it's pretty intense. I started working with someone, um, she's in Hawaii, and she's a, a flower um, wisdom um, energy healer. And so she does beautiful work, and it's been helping me a lot. So what... Um, I'm able to filter out the intense energy when Orion wants to come through and now it's able to flow pretty easily. So I can't feel a sensation as much anymore, but I know he's there because I can, there's a signature energy signature that I can feel when he's ready. 
think dream interpreting is also incredibly fun because it allows you to not feel shy about your message that you're receiving, especially I'm surrounded by people that are not interested in anything that we are having to talk about right now. So it's always so fun for me to be like, April, let me talk to you about all these things, you know, or Courtney, let's talk about all these things. Cause it just, I burst out of me. And I think it's fun that the one thing that a lot of people can still come in on, even if it, they're not woo woo or they don't allow it it are dreams because dreams are not woo dreams are dreams and so in interpreting them still is received that information is still received from them people that are like fearful you know mm -hmm. um of the message so i think that that's really fun and it's a it's a good bridge for for everyone to like kind of get to know what does my dream mean so that's fun <laughs> glad that you brought that up because if i had to look back I think perhaps dream interpretation was my gateway drug into, <laughs> into this spiritual space because I was reading a book by Robert A. Johnson and it's called Inner Work. And it's all about using dreams and active imagination for personal growth. And I just loved that. Just loved it because it wasn't telling you from the outside what each symbol means. It was all pointing you back to yourself. Like, what do you intuitively associate with a given um, imagery or word or number? And it walks you through four steps on how to interpret, interpret your dream for yourself. And so I thought that was really cool. And I guess that that was at the very start of my, my newest chapter in life was, um, I guess dream work. And maybe that's why I've stuck with it. And I love taking stabs at other people's dreams. It's because it's um, that first love in a way. So where I know we can't exactly see where our life journeys are taking us or where we'll end up. And that's part of the excitement. Um, but where do you see yourself going and evolving from here? What do you, what do you think uh, in, in your future? I don't know, but I do know that I'm okay with not knowing. At this point in my life, I'm trying to let go of control, but always leaning in. So what I'm trying to attract is helping people remold their inner light into what, what is probably a small segment to how they can shift their entire life. I'm not entirely sure yet. I just know I wanna help people um, in a bigger way than I am right now, but I need to feel it out and see how. And I think color is gonna be involved. <laughs> so we'll see. I love your fascination with color. And I think we realize uh, that children need to be in a colorful, a stimulating environment and all that stuff. But then as soon as they're out of kindergarten, we can often put them in very drab classrooms desks and all that stuff and we're told that or at least we, we get the message the conditioning as adults that we should be able to do uh, produce and put out into the world whatever it is re regardless of what our uh, environment looks like and that color is not important but for me it just in, even envisioning a color or wearing a certain color can revolutionize my motivation. It can revolutionize my energy levels. So I am so uh, excited to be able to follow you and see where this color journey takes you because I'm so interested as well into what <laughs> the, the magic, the ministry of, of color. So. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I, one of my things that I want to add on to Patreon is um, I found on Amazon are these color glasses that you can put on and they're just for their mood boosters or inspire, uh, colors that inspire you. So there's every color of the rainbow. <laughs> and what I want to do for my Patreons is send whatever color I think is the right color for them at the time that they add on their Patreon tier so that's one of the big things i want to do but I, it's also just something that anyone that's listening for your podcast can do is go on amazon and search color boosting glasses or whatever they're called and 
see which one you want to choose because there's pinks and there's there's um, purples and there is yellow mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's green and blue and so you know it's like it would be really cool if every day we wake up and uh, just for a little bit there we can put on our whatever color we want and just have some fun because if not, life is not fun if life doesn't have joy you uh, did it <laughs> I did it if life doesn't have joy in every moment, then it's just, it's kind of, uh. so why don't we go from uh to ha uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. and every second and boost that energy to be aligned with having God within us and feeling that in every moment, you know, so we are so magical uh, and we're constant creators. For the first tier, the $3 a month tier, um, they have access to the community, your Inside Out mm -hmm. podcast community. So maybe in there, just uh, like encourage people like, hey, this week, we're just going to try it out, buy a pair of glasses, and then just have people talk about their experience that week and see what difference it made, what colors seem to have prompted even more results, you know, favorable results than, than what others reported with gray. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I loved gray. It was great. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> Seeing everything in a very monochrome uh, lens might, might be beautiful. I know I love black and white pictures. So maybe there is magic in that too. I would be so yep. interested in seeing... <laughs> what people experience is. I love challenges. I love, well, no, okay, let me say this. I love not difficult challenges. I love challenges <laughs> in the way that I love changing things up a little bit and doing little experiments because otherwise things can seem so mundane and drab, especially for non-creatives who are, who are doing, you know, air quotes, normal job eight to five, it can feel very mundane, very non-magical, very oh, depressing. And so whenever you yeah. can just add one bit of, of magic, of playfulness, of joy, it can turn things around so quickly. It's oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think that's one of our most divine gifts is that we're all playful beings, fun beings, creative beings. And it's like, it's like when you tap into what the creator wants you to already like be tapping into, it's all of a sudden it's blissful in a way that almost probably what near death experience people go into. It's like that you're still able to tap into that energy however you want to. It's, it's there. It's always there. And, um, just doing something just as silly as that can help you tap into that energy. So uh, I, I highly recommend them. <laughs> um, so this is, so it's funny that you're a poet. Um, this is the poem said, my husband said yesterday, he woke up and read the poem and it haunted him. Want me to read it to you? Yes. Okay, so it's one of his favorite movies is Legends of the Fall. So he thinks ly uh, lyrically and also the, the way the score is, is gorgeous. But there is there's actual lyrics to it. The lyrics are by, by Brock Walsh. And it's called Twilight and Mist. And it says, As evening fell, a maiden stood at the edge of a wood. In her hands lay the reins of a stallion, and ne'er I'd seen a girl as fair, heard a gentler voice anywhere, whispered, alas, she belonged, belonged to another, another forever. Yes, she belonged to the twilight and mist. Now, I'm saying, reading this poem because he had a dream about this, and he woke up to it, and he had to read it out loud to me over coffee. So it correlates perfectly to the podcast, <laughs> but uh, I just thought it was so haunting that um, and beautiful because I don't know if you remember the soundtrack, but the soundtrack is just an unreal experience. And um, so, yeah, that's really cool that you do that because playing around with words is just, it's so fun. <laughs> As an artist, 
Uh, sometimes, and I, I heard this touched on last night in a clubhouse conversation with the uh, humble, humble the poet. He was talking about this, how um, as artists, creatives, we often are judged on that one powerhouse thing that we created and we're expected to follow up on that. Right. And what happens when you don't produce something that's as uh, popular? And whereas he said that in the Middle Ages or Renaissance or whatever, I can't remember now, but these artists, they were not appreciated for themselves. They were appreciated as vessels. And so whenever... Uh, the public would see something so awe-inspiring that an artist created, they would say Ole, which was the version of saying Allah or God. You know, they were in awe of God uh, showing himself through this person's work. And so Humble the Poet last night, he was like, so what if these basketball players, you know, whenever they make this unbelievable shot, instead of praising that player, the person, wow, just being thankful and in awe that the creator is able to show himself through this person. And, mm. and so it takes a lot of that pressure off of you as a vessel to create, create, create something bigger and better and better and better when that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> It's, a, it's the most amount of pressure because it's the pressure that you're giving to yourself, which sometimes behind, you know, our eyes, we're not as kind to ourselves as we are to other people. And that's something that's, it's like as an artist, that's why, for example, with a podcast, it's like, if I don't have anything, I'm just not going to do it and allowing myself to relax and mm -hmm. be inspired again. Because if you're not inspired, your message is going to come around like a limp hand when you're getting a shake, you know, it's like, oh. So I love being inspired and however you guys take, however anyone takes their inspiration, um, use it however you want to and don't be embarrassed however it comes out. You can do be anything. You can use milk jugs and make puppets out of them. Who cares? Just have fun with it. Uh, create because we're, we are all one. And so I am you, you are me. It's like, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to be me. And I love seeing my other versions, you know, everyone everywhere doing different things because that's what makes the world so fun and unique and joyful. And mostly what I want people to take away today is that we all, we're all creators. We all can find what we want to do with our hands, with our hearts, with our energy. And everyone has their own way. And so there's no right way. And there's no, never compare yourself to other people, other creators, because we all are creating and it's all just different flow of what that looks like for you, your own version. And, and that's the only thing I, I want people to take away, that away. And I'm into colors and I like to use them. And that's what I do. And that's who I am. And I know that, but it takes a long time to get there and it takes it's a journey to get there. So if you ever are out there and you feel stagnant or if you feel blocked or if you feel like you're not in a spot where you want to be, take the time for yourself to acknowledge that and take a moment to embrace who you are, meditate even one minute a day and try to get to know yourself because we're here to get to know ourselves because we're all part of it. So um, yeah, that's the only thing I want you guys to take away is be you, be awesome. <laughs> Brittany, how can people find out more about you and follow what you're making in your own sandbox? Um, so uh, follow me on Instagram. I am Inside Out Pod. And I'm also a makeup artist. Uh, you can find me on Izzy B Makeup, I-Z-Z-Y B Makeup. I named it after my dog, Izzy. And uh, so that's, she's my best friend. So I love having her playful energy in the, my name of who I, what I do. So find us there. And then for music, my husband and I are the frontiers official on Instagram and we're also on Facebook and we have our own website. So check us out. <laughs> 
I love how in the Lifestylist podcast, Luke Story ends his pods asking his guests this question. So I'm including it in mine. Who have been three teachers or teachings in your life that you might share with our audience that they could go research and also learn from? The guiding lights for me have been Jesus Christ, his mother, Mary. Uh, I see her all the time with me and Archangel Michael. They're not here, but they are here. So um, those have been my guides and check them out. One of the first things that brought me to back to, and I never straight away, but the energy of Jesus really was, um, there's a specific vibration to him. And so there, there is a picture that I look at quite often. And there was a story behind it was this little girl. She's a painter and she painted a picture um, of Jesus. And someone also had a near-death experience and saw this art. And they said, that's exactly what I saw when I passed and came back. Anyway, the vibration of that energy to me is something that I like to bring in with me when I go into meditation or when I feel like I need a little love. I will ask for that vibration of Jesus to come so I can just have that warmth and love and sweetness and tenderness from him. Mary, Mary came to me when I was meditating and her, her color is so beautiful and pink or her color is so beautiful and blue with pink around her swirling. And I feel her all the time and her reflections that she gives me are just peaceful and peace and calm because I do everything really fast. So I like bringing her in or feeling her is so calming for me. And then Archangel Michael, um, whenever I ask him to come, you can call him with the color uh, very bright blue with a sword in there, but he is a protector and he likes to protect. So if you ever feel uncomfortable in a moment, even if you're walking by yourself down an alley, you can call him in for protection. And that's just the general idea of them and how they are with, in my life. Thank you, Brittany, so much for joining me in Chef East Sandbox. Much love to you, and I can't wait to see you uh, in the Soul Empowering Hypnosis Level Up Workshop and see where that takes us both. I'm excited, too, and thank you for having me, and thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs>